Now, what I like to do is at least kind of go into some definitions or at least kind of look into the graph. The basic parent graph of um, the basic parent graph of our exponential is fairly simple. All right, you have a nice little, uh, we do f of x. Uh, so you could say here's your f of x axis. Here's your x-axis. There's one couple important points. All right. One is for all exponential graphs, they're all going to have the exact same in y-intercept unless there's a transformation. But the parent graph, it does not matter what the base is. y equals, or f of x equals. Doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen, if it's x, f of x equals uh, 8 to the x or if f of x equals um, 2 to the x. Either one of these graphs, these bases are not going to affect our transformation. These are going to be more of the dilation on how the graph is going to grow or descend. But as far as what you need to understand, the reason why they are going to have the exact same, and we'll talk about how to do it with the table, is because if I take any of these, remember to find the y-intercept, you set x equal to 0. Right? When I say, hey, find the, find the x-intercept, you put 0 in for or find the y-intercept, you put 0 in for x. Well, what you guys should notice is it doesn't matter what the base is, your y-intercept is always going to be 1. Right? Yes. OK. So a couple things I want to talk about um, with this exponential graph. And mainly, I want to really get into kind of the domain and range, and then also talk about the asymptote. Now, I know some of you, we very briefly talked about rational functions. Well, we didn't talk about it this year, but in previous classes, talked about rational functions and asymptotes. Remember, asymptote is a line that your function is going to approach, right? And generally, you could say that they usually do not cross your asymptote. They're just approaching that. So this graph, the way that I've graphed it, looks like, and behavior, looks like it kind of goes up and to the right and then down to the left. But it kind of looks like it's tapering off when it goes to the left, that it's not going to get into the negative quadrant. And that is true, all right? And let's kind of look at this and see the reason why. So I'm just going to pretend, um, let's do f of x equals, let's just do 2 to the x. We'll keep it simple, all right? So if I was going to create a table for this, I would do f of x, x and f of x values. And I'm just going to pick values that I want to pick. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to pick crazy numbers. Just pick uh, some very simple numbers. So the re what I want to kind of get with um, explain to you guys is let's just kind of pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now remember when graphing by using a table, all right, we just take those values and we plug them in, right? So this is 2 to the negative second power. This would be 2 to the negative first, 2 to the 0, 2 to the first, and 2 to the second power, right? Now well, a couple things I want you guys to understand. 2 to the negative second power we have to be very careful with this. A lot of people say it's going to be a negative number. And remember, when we look at this graph, if I said 2 to the negative second power, that means it would be down to like negative 4. That doesn't make sense. So we need to remember what are our properties of exponents. And our property of exponents state that if you have x raised to a negative power, that is equivalent to 1 over x to that power. That's the properties of exponents that we went back and reviewed. So it's very important that you guys understand that because this is 1 over 2 squared, which is equal to 1 fourth. This is 1 over 2 to the first power, which is 1 half. 2 to the 0 power is just going to equal 1, 2, and 4. All right. So what I want you guys to understand is if I keep on getting larger and larger negative numbers, is this ever going to get to 0? No. No, it's just going to keep on being a bigger fraction, right? If you do um, negative 3. So then you'll have 2 to the negative third power. Well, that's just equal to 1 eighth. What about if you do negative 4? Well, that's going to be 2 to the negative fourth power, which equals 1 over 16. And you're, kidding, you're going, to, going to keep on getting a larger and larger, larger, larger number, but it's never going to go to 0. Because you're always going to have a number 1 divided by another, divided by another number that's going to keep on getting larger and larger. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that as we go to the left, as we keep on getting negative, negative, and negative, this is never going to get to 0. It's going to keep on approaching 0, right? Keep on, if you keep on plugging this in, do 1 over 8, do 1 over 16, do 1 over 32, do 1 over 64. That number keeps on getting smaller and smaller and approaching 0. 
but it's never ever going to approach zero. Therefore, when we're talking about that, we can say that the asymptote is um, y equals zero. So you guys are going to want to make sure you write that down. Your asymptote is y equals zero. And now that we have an asymptote, we can also kind of start talking about domain and range. So if I look at the domain of a exponential function, remember the domain is going to be the set of all x values that are going to make your function true. So what that means is, you know, if I put an x, if I choose an x value here, is there a point on the graph? Yes. If I choose an x value here, is there a point on the graph? Yes. So for each one of those points, I have a value, I have a value that's going to make it true for that function. What about if I pick an x value over here? Is it going to be on the graph? Yeah, it, it will because this graph continues. But it's going to be way up there, right? And if I choose a value all the way over here, it's still going to be on the graph. But I just obviously I can't represent because this graph is another thing you guys can tell this is a function, right? When we talk, remember we talk about polynomials, it has, has to be continuous. This is a continuous graph. There's no breaks or sharp turns. And the graph continues infinitely in the negative direction and in my positive direction. So therefore, the domain is from negative infinity to infinity. And that's going to be true for all of your logarithmic, or I'm sorry, your exponential functions. Every x value you plug in there, and let me, let's put a case in there. Let's look at our function f equals 2 to the x. Is there a number that you can think of that you cannot plug in for x that would make this equation not true? Is there a number you can't plug in for x? Obviously, the real number system, right? Because x is any real number. But think about any real number. Can you put in 2 to the 99 million? Yeah, can you put 2 to the negative 1 million? Yeah, there's every number you can plug in for x, right? So the domain is all real numbers. You can plug in any number you want to between negative infinity and infinity, and you will find and you will get one single output value. But let's talk about the range. The range, remember, is the output. So whatever number you plug in for x, are you able to get any possible number? Now I showed you guys, when you keep on getting larger, you're just going to keep on getting higher and higher numbers. And when you get to smaller numbers, negatives, you keep on getting smaller and smaller numbers, but you're never going to get to 0. right? So our range, is it possible for me to put a number in for x and to get a negative number? Can I put 2 raised to some power and get a negative number? No, because when I put negative numbers in for there, it just makes it a fraction. And when I put positive numbers, it just makes it a larger number. So it's impossible for me to put in a value in for x and to get a negative number. It's also impossible for me to put a value into x and get the number 0. All right? Because when I put 0 into x, I get 1. So our range does not include 0. I'm sorry. But it goes from negative infinity to 0. And we're going to use parentheses because 0 and negative infinity are not included in the answer. So that's going to be your range. All right? So that's when we talked about asymptotes and range for your exponential functions. Cool? All right. OK. As don't seem to.